it's Alex coming at you from Southern California. Uh, this video I've been kind of thinking about for a while. Um, this is going to be about the uh, Delmark uh, label out of Chicago. Of course, Delmark, uh, a label that is mostly known amongst uh, blues collectors, I would say primarily. Uh, they did put out a fair amount of uh, jazz as well. In fact, I think at least according to Discogs, their first ever release in 1959 was a 7-inch uh, from uh, Yusuf Latif, which uh, I didn't know until I was doing some research here. But the story kind of begins with uh, with this guy, uh, Bob Kester, uh, born in St. Louis. Um, I think he founded the label when he was only 17, 18 years old. Um, moves to Chicago shortly thereafter and uh, yeah begins to begins the this label uh, originally Del Mar because there was a some kind of a branding uh, dispute with Selmer the instrument maker out of France um, originally I guess Selmer Del Mar was too close or something so he changed the name to uh, to Del Marc um, Bob Kester was also a huge record collector that's really kind of how he uh, started his, you know, his passion for, for music and opened also one of the kind of uh, institutions um, of uh, jazz collecting. He opened a store in Chicago called uh, the Jacker, uh, Re uh, Jazz Record Mart. Um, one of the big regrets of me living in Chicago is that I only got a chance to go there a couple of times um, for whatever reason. I mean, it was kind of an awkward kind of touristy part of the city and that didn't didn't go there as often as, as I would have liked um, and then uh, yeah I think it closed on 2016 he eventually opened this store uh, <clears throat> Blues and Jazz Mart much smaller um, and yeah so this video really though is about the story of um, how he was sort of a, a curator for um, avant-garde jazz Sort of the new music, right? Um, the more um, you know, free jazz, uh, free improv, whatever you want to call it, and really sort of a, a reluctant uh, curator in a way. Um, you know, I actually got to talk to to Bob briefly when I when I visited his store a few years ago, and you could tell. I mean, his his passion, you know, to this day is is really like pre-war jazz and, and blues primarily, which. You know, again, that's kind of what his label is mostly known for. But, you know, I have read in interviews where he said, you know, that the most important, in his own words, stuff that he ever put out, you know, were these 12 records that I'm about to show, which are, um, you know, the records that, you know, are really, um, you know, really kept uh, sort of this American strain of, improvisational uh, free music I mean and you'll see that you know there, there's a, there's certainly a range here of, um, of of records that you know touch upon various you know styles within the genre but this is from 1966 um, an iconic uh, cover of course um, Roscoe Mitchell and of course a lot of these records are closely associated with the AACM, the Association of Advancement, uh, for Advancement for Creative Musicians, that was founded by, um, we'll call it, uh, Richard Abrams and Phil Korn, and uh, I think Phil, Phil Korn is gonna, certainly a, a fascinating character, and, and uh, I do plan to do a video on him as well, but, um, so this, the kind of the first, uh, you know, the, the label's first foray into uh, the new music. Um, Roscoe Mitchell, of course, of the later of the Art Ensemble of Chicago. Um, just a landmark uh, record, again, with a lot of the uh, uh, AACM members, uh, Roscoe Mitchell, Lester Bowie, Hermes McIntyre, Malachi Favors, uh, Alvin Fielder on percussion. Um, classic stuff. Um, then from 1967, we have uh, Joseph Jarman, uh, song for Joseph Jarman. Um, this is actually a later pressing, uh, the original one is a different cover. But uh, yeah, and there's something else I wanted to mention here. The, 
the art direction on all of these records, um, almost all of them by a Polish-American uh, designer, uh, Zbigniew uh, Jastrzewski. Um, all of these photographs and, and uh, covers by him, absolutely fantastic. Um, and the other thing, of course, is, you know, a lot of this music and, of course, you know, the AACM very much uh, about uh, creating, uh, sort of freeing itself from, you know, the sort of individual, the indi individual and sort of, um, you know, leader-focused uh, philosophy of a lot of, um, you know, labels like Blue Note, right, you know, which were primarily focused around, you know, a leader and then the leader would kind of assemble his... Uh, his cohort, the philosophy here, of course, of the AACM and of Art Ensemble of Chicago is very much a one of a community, of a communal sound, of, you know, in addition to, of course, all of the great things that, that came with uh, the new music, you know, pushing the boundaries of, of, uh, of jazz. <clears throat> this is one of my favorites, and this is one that we're listening to now. Uh, the founder of the AACM, uh, Richard Mohal Abrams. This is Levels and Degrees of Light. This one is from 1968. Um, again, features a lot of the same folks, but also here, Anthony Braxton, of course, a key figure of all of this that we're talking about, and um, just, uh, a giant, of course. Uh, additionally, we've got uh, Thurman Baker on drums, uh, we do have <clears throat> the vocals, which you might have been hearing here from uh, Penelope Taylor as well, and yeah, this is just um, indescribably uh, just beautiful, I mean, yeah, without words, just uh, listen to these records. Um, Another uh, Joseph German release is also from 1968. Um, you know, one thing about, uh, you know, Bob Custer, I mean, he, he kept a lot of these records in print as long as he could. Um, you know, if you go into their catalog, you'll see that he repressed a lot of these records two, three, four times throughout the year. So, you know, a lot of them are, they're still available. Um, you know, maybe not as easy to find outside of the Midwest, outside of the U.S., um, but there's a lot of copies available of these, and, you know, in my mind, they're still hugely underappreciated and, and uh, undervalued. Um, you know, this is another big group. This second one actually uh, features Fred Anderson on tenor sax. I don't know if that's, you know, might be, might be one of his first uh, recordings for Fred Anderson, another... Uh, Chicago legend. <clears throat> the debut of uh, Anthony Braxton here, also from um, 1968. Um, this one, um, uh, this one features uh, Leroy Jenkins, who I love, on not just the violin and the viola, but the harmonica. Uh, bass drum, the recorder, cymbals, a lot of these records, and what I love about these 12 records is just the breadth of, of uh, different uh, instruments and percussions. I mean, they were, they were just really trying everything, it was really, um, and then also in keeping with that, that sense of uh, communal sound, right, where every, every member is, is doing something, providing some something to to each of these recordings so yeah a landmark uh you know the debut of anthony very young anthony braxton never got how old he was when he was you know in his very early 20s probably <clears throat> my opinion maybe the most beautiful um you know spiritual jazz you know uh album covers ever put out again the work of uh Yastrzemski. Uh, on the graphic design, um, you know, very similar uh, large group here, uh, Leo Smith on the trumpet here as well, um, uh, Claudine Myers on piano, I'm not familiar with, I'll have to find out more about her, um, 
had a couple of African players as well, George Hines on vocals. Um, I actually prefer the the other Maurice McIntyre that I'll show in a second more. But a beautiful record for sure. <coughs> Excuse me. Another fantastic one for from uh, Mo Hall, <clears throat> uh, young at heart, wise in time. Uh, Leo Smith, Henry uh, Fredko, and the Alto. Um, actually, I haven't, haven't listened to this one in a little while. I, I do remember it's fantastic though, and again, incredible ph photography on this one. Um, <clears throat> this one, a uh, double LP from uh, Mr. Braxton. <clears throat> Interestingly, sort of. Uh, Promoted sort of like as like a budget type of release or something um, Which is kind of fun considering how Sort of uncommercial Mr. Braxton has always been um, um, Yeah, again this one a double LP This one's 1971 <clears throat> Has a nice little uh, interview here on the, in the gatefold with uh, Anthony, this one has uh, some really interesting pieces, um, each one dedicated to uh, to Braxton's heroes, so track number two uh, dedicated to John Cage, uh, track number four dedicated to Cecil Taylor, um, uh, side on the second LP dedicated to uh, Leroy Jenkins. Uh, so each one, uh, a different dedication, fantastic one. Uh, this is the other Maurice McIntyre record. Um, Forces and Feelings, I prefer this one to the original one. Not the greatest cover, a little bit generic there. Um, in fact, I'm not sure that, uh, yeah, this, this, I don't think the you know, Stremski cover. Uh, he plays, uh, McIntyre plays flute and clarinet on this one as well, which I really enjoy. Uh, German, um, sorry, uh, Fred Hopkins, Hopkins on bass, and a couple of um, Arita Wolford on vocals, who I'm not familiar with. Maybe my favorite on the label. And I know I've shown this before, and I know I think Buttery has shown this before, and maybe others. Um, Mr. Dawson probably showed this, I believe. Joseph Jarman, Anthony Braxton, Together Alone. Um, they're both playing a multitude of instruments. Um, I think Braxton's playing, playing the, playing the uh, bass clarinet. He's playing electronics here. All kinds of incredible percussions going on here. Absolutely essential one. Just a couple more here. Um, this is from 1975. This is where, yeah, this cover kind of looks very dated here. Almost like a CTIS type, type cover, but a fantastic record. I was just bringing this today. Beautiful playing uh, from uh, Little Hall on the piano, and uh, yeah, kind of a different cast here. No, uh, not an AACM uh, cast of characters here. Uh, some players I'm not really familiar with: uh, Wilbur Campbell, uh, Edwin Doherty, Richard Brown. Sounds familiar. Um, but yeah, cheap, worth checking out. And then the last one is uh, this art ensemble uh, record. Um, Interestingly, you know, the, the only one um, on the label, and this is actually originally a J Japan only release uh, from 1974 of a performance at uh, University of Chicago's uh, Mandel Hall from 1972. Double LP. <clears throat> and I, I know I haven't shown the label, I know it's, you know, it's a pretty classic label. In fact, this is a, I forgot, this is actually a white label. Uh, promo, but um, 
that's the classic, you know, Delmark label. They have, you know, many, uh, many variants over the year on the label. But yeah, this is a great record. Um, really fiery performance from the ensemble here. Yeah, I love the sort of uh, Black Panther type imagery here. Um, nice gatefold. Um, yeah, so there's the US pressing on Delmark. Um, I think it was like a trio release in Japan. Anyway, wanted to keep this relatively short um, and, you know, recommend those to, you know, anybody. You know, obviously the VC seems to be really split between uh, sort of experts and novices now. And yeah, hopefully somebody watches this video that uh, is not familiar with uh, some of these records and the Delmark label is sort of a real uh, champion of, um, of uh, modern jazz as it sort of evolved from, you know, the mid to late 60s and, and into the 70s. Um, and especially you know in the U.S. because obviously a lot of the a lot of the best players of that movement uh, you know fled to Europe for for many reasons and um, you know this was a an incredible community of musicians that you know stayed in the U.S. stayed in Chicago and uh, you know thanks to Bob Kester uh, who put these uh, these records out I'm not sure that uh, they would have been put out otherwise at least in the U.S. but yeah. Bob Kester, founder of Delmark. Take care, everybody. Do you look for in artists and catalog that you work with? Well, uh, we hope to sell them, but we want originality.